Seniors' health care in the home is a major theme in New Brunswick. We have systemic challenges to how we look after our aging population. Today's guest is Karen Lake. She is a senior home care specialist and care navigator. Her conversation takes us into many of the details about how to provide home health care, the systemic change that's needed that could also create many jobs, and the notion of using a snow globe as an image for how we need to turn the system upside down and turn it back up and watch the new pieces fall into place. When it works, it works. When you have that great combination of um, well-trained, well-qualified staff working with clients who whose care needs they're able to manage and care for, when the family's contributing, when the care workers are working closely together, um, it can flow and it can flow really well and it can work really well. I've seen many clients, many family situations where they've been supported at home and it's just worked. Those people have stayed out of the hospital. They've been taking their medications. They're as healthy and well as they can be in their community, still involved in their community, still out um, uh, doing things that they would like to be able to do. And I, I do believe that a lot of that is the supportive care that they're getting. So when it works, it works and it can work really well. Keep mm. people out of the hospital and keep people from falling. Yeah. Key. Key. Do you have a sense of the scale or the numbers of what that would be? Again, mainstream media will talk about the drainage of resources mm. in a hospital with people who are there that shouldn't be there because they should be cared for at home. But yeah. we never get a sense of the numbers. Is it 8,000? Is it 10,000? Is it 4% of the population? Is it 15% of the population? Mm. And because an election's coming, we'll be talking about health care costs. It'll be the number one um, cost for the government. Oh, we have to reduce, that, that we have to find efficiencies. And you've mapped out <laughs> where one of those solutions are about keeping people in home, put the money over here for professionals to be trained to come into the home, and that would save you over there. <clears throat> but do we have a sense of scale? Is it 5,000 that we need, 10,000 people that we're talking about? Yeah, I, I'd, I would, I'd be guesstimating to say um, like two or 3,000. So there, the, when we talked earlier about the huge potential for a job creation opportunity, mm -hmm. um, and these are people that can be, there's existing courses in the province. Mm -hmm. um, there's one um, educational organization and the estimate they gave was about $3,500. So we spend lots more than that on call center employees for call centers who don't even stay in New Brunswick. Uh, so I, I'd like to, to look at how can we try to uh, subsidize people to get their education at a more costly rate for people that are going to stay here and look after our own people. Yeah. So I think at any given time, there's probably between three and 400 people who are in an acute care hospital bed waiting for either placement in a nursing home, special care home, or to go back home. A lot of those people don't go back home. Mm -hmm. um, the doctors really don't f have any faith in the home care sector and I can't say I blame them. They are ultimately responsible for their patients and they have to feel confident that they're going home to a safe situation where mm -hmm. they're going to be well cared for and well supervised and if their health needs demand supervision with their medications, with bathing, dressing, grooming, walking, mobility, hmm. um, and the doctors don't feel that the home support, the personal support sector can can do that, then they'll say you have to go to a nursing home. Yeah. They won't encourage it, and I don't blame them. Hmm. So there's a, there, there's a lot, again, it goes back to that uh, snow globe, there's a lot of restructuring that has to happen, a big part of it's education and getting more people um, wanting to be, uh, we need to build a care force. Yep. That's what I call it, hashtag care force. Care force. Hashtag NB care force. We need to build a care force to care for our own people. And yeah, create jobs for a lot of people. What can be a hugely rewarding? For those situations where I said people were being uh, maintained at home, 
uh, their risk of falls were lowered. They were eating good meals. Yeah. They were being socialized. They weren't um, isolated. They were engaged in their community. Their families were well supported. In those situations, for those caregivers, that's a very rewarding career. Yeah. And if we could just get the wages up to where the pay equity suggests that it should have been in 2012, mm -hmm. they suggest that personal care workers in the province should have been paid $20 an hour in 2012. And now we're 2018. Yeah. If we could just make some of those things happen, then I think we could have a lot more people being supported at home. This is wonderful. You're mapping out where solutions are, how to get mm -hmm. to the solutions. Um, and helping to shift the narrative away from the chronic problem description that media tend to drive about healthcare costs in New Brunswick mm -hmm. and bed blockers and mm -hmm. tsunamis of seniors and that narrative needs Nobody to go away. Nobody ever wanted to be a bed blocker. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's it's like no, this is worst case scenario stuff. So don't make it yeah. the headline. You know, yeah. it's not the headline. Yeah. Um, we have maybe five minutes left. Where would you like to wander to wrap us mm -hmm. up? Is there something we haven't touched on? We've touched on a bit of politics, a bit of the economics, um, a bit of uh, the demographics and the, the scale, your personal yeah. story to a degree, impact on a home for a family and its soul, you know? Yeah, I just I just think it it's so timely um, what it is that we're talking about today and even the work that I'm developing. It's, it's just all so timely. I was thinking about that as I was coming over here, how... Um, the work that I'm doing to support caregivers because more than ever caregivers family caregivers are being called upon um, and it, it really doesn't stop whether their their parent or their loved one is at home whether they're in a special care home or whether they're in the hospital or whether they're in a nursing home you, you, you really never stop um, being a caregiver but um, I really realize that more than ever we're relying on family caregivers um, to support their loved ones because mm -hmm. having people at home that's who that's who they're relying on it's not just personal care workers it's not just extramural it's this whole team of people that come together it's the doctor it's the visiting nurses it's the pharmacist it could be the personal care worker it could be a dietitian that's visiting there's a whole um, uh, bunch <laughs> of people that support and in the middle of course is the the person requiring support and care and their family is right along with them so the that's why I find my work is just so exciting and it's so necessary because more than ever caregivers need to be supported because they are right there on the front line with their family member doing everything they can to advocate um, and do the best thing for them because families in the end want the best thing for their loved one, really. And so I just really consider it an honor that that I am a part of that. So um, that's why I think over the course of the last year um, that I've really just, as I said before, laser focused on supporting those caregivers in whatever it might be. It might just be they need a little advice. Maybe they need a lot of advice. Maybe they need a whole plan. Um, maybe it's helpful for them just to see a motivational post. Today is Motivation Monday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe a caregiving tip that comes up. Maybe that really lands for them and they thought, I never thought about that. Hmm. Um, maybe coming to a live event where they can um, hear that there's other people that are going through something similar, that it's not just me. Like a, like a lot of people are experiencing this. And having that mutual support, what I call a circle of care, where we all support each other. Mm. So it's, it's it's hugely exciting. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank this. You. It's been Thanks, an Dennis. amazing, wonderful conversation. Anytime. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.